Hello and welcome to another Murders at Karlov Manor Draft. We have somehow fallen to rank number four. I actually did a stream the other day and I went, I went 7-0, 1 and 3. So 15 and 3 and I ended the day rank 3. Like I, I had net plus 12 wins. I had net plus 12 wins and somehow I fell. So the battle is very heated right now. I'm recording this on a day I normally just take the day off because I gotta try to hit rank one or at least gotta maintain a top three spot, right? I gotta stay on the podium. That's what we're gonna go with now. Top three is the podium. So let's head into this draft and try to open something nice. Before this draft fires, I do wanna say I did launch my Patreon channel. If you wanted to support my, uh, my channel, that's the best way to do so. The link is in the description below. Now let's click ready. All right, let us head into this pack. Let's take a look at what we have available here. So we have 10th District Hero, which I believe is going to be the pick. I know white is overdrafted and also the best color, but I mean, when you open a white rare, which is one of the better two drops in the set, I am going to take it. Um, other options here are Person of Interest at Common. Murder is okay, but you all know that I dislike starting out to draft with a black card, generally. Um, there's four uncommons. Outrageous Robbery is actually an okay finisher. If you have, for example, a black control deck with like eight removal spells or nine removal spells and you just need a, a top end card to go over the top. But I don't think this card belongs in every deck and you have to really build a specific deck to take advantage of this card. Uh, Demir Control, for example, is where I could see this card being really good. Uh, hard Hitting Question is also pretty good. Um, if it was not for the 10th District Hero, I would probably take the Hard Hitting Question or Person of Interest out of this pack. But let's start the draft with Person of Interest and... Okay, I mean, I don't mind starting with back-to-back -back white rares, do you? Let's go ahead and take that. The other best cards in this pack are the green cards. You have Get a Leg Up, which is an excellent combat trick. This is still something, one of the, one of the cards that I still see late that I feel like you shouldn't. I think this card is just quite, quite good. Uh, most green decks definitely want this and will play multiple copies. Uh, there's also Nervous Gardener and Granite Witness as considerations, but of course, starting out with 10th District Hero into Unyielding Gatekeeper. I mean, look at these two drops. That's the thing with this card. This is great on two, and it's also great at three. It's just great at both. Okay, moving on to this pack, we have two extremely powerful uncommons here in Coerce to Kill and Repulsive Mutation. The problem is they both require me to stretch my mana base just a little bit. Uh, but they're both very, very strong. The other option is to take something like a Crowd Control Warden and kind of try to stay more aggressive and proactive instead of trying to draft all the different colors. And I have recently been doing very poorly with Green X, right? Take green cards with a bunch of fixing and see how things go. So I'm going to take Crowd Control Warden here because this is a card I'm definitely wanting to be white. So this will definitely make my deck. Whereas if I take something like a Coerce to Kill, I'm going to have to figure out some mana fixing and take, you know, try to just stretch my mana base. Whereas I think Crowd Control Warden will just be a solid card in my deck and definitely the safer pick to make out of that pack. Moving on to this pack, this is a fairly weak pack. The best uh, non-land card, I'm going to say, is the Vengeful Creeper and Crawl Whipcracker. The Crawl Whipcracker is a bit hard to cast. Uh, now, in that last pack, if I were to take a card, it probably would have been the Repulsive Mutation because a base green deck allows you to splash a little bit better, right? So if I was green-white splashing blue, I could have taken the Repulsive Mutation. I'm going to take Escape Tunnel here, though, because there's nothing here strong enough for me to just take. For example, if there was like a good removal spell, like a Shock or a Galvanize, I would take that. But because there isn't, I'm going to take this Escape Tunnel here, noting that I'm not seeing a whole lot of red cards at the moment. So red-white might not be a thing, but green! Certainly open here. Killer Among Us, I am definitely taking here. Fifth pick, super happy about that. But the, uh, the, the nice thing here to show that green is probably open is the fact that we see Killer Among Us, V2 Gazi Inspector, and Topiary Panther all in this same pack. After we took this escape tunnel, perhaps perhaps we're thinking twice about maybe having the, um, the repulsive mutation in our deck. But you know what? Killer Among Us, Crowd Control Warden is a nice combination as well. And no regrets, right? No regrets. Let's keep going. Uh, this is a fairly weak pack. Uh, Unscrupulous Agent is a decent black card. Haven't seen much blue. I don't think I want to take the Unauthorized Exit. I don't have any combat tricks. So I'm just going to take an Airtight Alibi here. 
Just to fill out my deck, I really dislike Public Thoroughfare in general, unless I'm like a five color deck. And I also really discard five color decks in general. So this is just a card that I just generally don't take very highly. I don't think Airtight Alibi is a particularly good combat trick, but if you don't have enough, it's certainly something that you can play in a pinch. And now we're seeing a bunch of blue cards. There's a Gadget Technician, a Deduce, and a Furtive Courier, which is very interesting. But there was that pack with the Killer Among Us and a bunch of green cards. I don't think I should necessarily be led astray. We'll note that we are not seeing that many white cards, but with 10th District Hero and Unyielding Gatekeeper, I'm, I'm willing to fight for white here and just go green-white. I'm going to take this Hedge Maze here because I do just like on-color Surveil Lands, even if it shares one color. And this does open, open me up for a potential blue splash if that's available, namely that unstable, um, unstable, uh, repulsive mutation rather. Here we have Topiary Panther versus V2 Ghazi Inspector. Hmm. I think this deck wants the Inspector here. I think I'd rather just take the two drop here first and then figure out whether or not I want to go deep on my mana fixing later. Now we have... A pretty weak pack. I guess I'll take Aftermath Analyst if there's a world where we end up somehow in blue-green. Oh my gosh, how open is green? This is not always the case, but now we can splash. We picked up a Hedge Maze, an Escape Tunnel, and a Nervous Gardener. So this is looking quite nice. Setting us up nicely for a potential splash here. Like I said before, white very, very not open, but I mean, look, Arena's just telling me, hey... I don't care if white isn't open. I'm going to keep feeding you these white rares. So you know what? Just take them and you figure it out. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take another 10th District Hero here. Not going to complain about it and move on. The nice thing here is green is so open. It's just like we can just take mostly green cards and then take whatever, you know, buried in the garden, makeshift uh, bindings that we see. And then also because of the fact that we have this Nervous Gardener and the Hedge Maze and the Escape Tunnel, hey, maybe we can splash some free blue cards. The only, you know, uh, I'm Doppelgang, Doppelgang, I'm looking at you, or uh, cards of that nature. Remember, red was not open at all in pack number one, so not interested in any of these red cards. Galvanize is okay on the splash. I wonder if Delny does anything. I don't think so. I think it's a lot better in, um, in black-white. So I'm not sure that I want to take the Delny here. I could. I mean, it's a three-drop. Maybe I can draft around it. It's interesting. What does it do? So it, tr it works with V2 Ghazi Inspector. And it works with Nervous Gardener. All right, you know what? I'm just going to take it here. The other option here is Topiary Panther. But this is a mythic that I don't get to play with that often. So I'm going to take it. And uh, I guess we'll just see what happens. I guess we'll just see what happens. Uh, moving on to this pack here. There's an Escape Tunnel, Case of the Trampled Garden. Uh, we have a couple of enchantments for Case File Auditor. But I don't know that we necessarily have enough. Uh, we're not necessarily a super aggressive deck with V2 Ghazi Inspector. So I'm going to take this Glint Weaver. Definitely a really, really nice top end threat to have in your deck. Let's go ahead and take that. I'll put this Delny here still on the side here just in case. We'll take Nervous Gardener here over Museum Nightwatch. There's also another Galvanize here. But yeah, our mana fixing is now on point. It's looking fantastic. We have a bunch of face down cards here. We have potentially up to six two drops here also, by the way, right? But these are all uh, creatures that you can play face down. And now that's a Sumala Sentry. I do like Analyze the Pollen as well, but in white green, the pick's gotta be Sumala Sentry here. We already have Double Nervous Gardener. Sumala Sentry specifically is really, really great with uh, um, disguise creatures that are cheap to flip up. So the Nervous Gardeners and the Unyielding Gatekeepers are excellent with the Sumala Sentry. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of happy I picked up this Airtight Alibi just because right now we don't have any other combat tricks. All right, moving on, moving on. There is an Absolving Lamasu. I don't care too much about that. There's a Knot on my watch. I am lacking removal. This is not a card I typically like that much, but we don't have, we're not that great here at collecting evidence. This is pretty cool with Delny, but I think I'm going to take Knot on my watch. Um, mostly because I have my two drops covered here. I have seven two drops and I just literally have no spells. So I'm just going to play this, um, in my deck just to have some kind of interaction against, uh, my opponents. 
not the biggest fan of make your move, but I will just take a Rift Burst Hellion as another decent face down creature to play that flips over into something gigantic in the late game. And here we'll take the V2 Ghazi Inspector number two. Now, if I want to be able to collect evidence here, Topiary Panther is probably the card that I'm looking at here, but still going to play this card. Here, I'll take Fanatical Strength over Rubble Belt Maverick. Really happy to pick up another trick. I don't think I want to play this Delny. But we, look, sorry, I, I got to keep it here just in case. Or else, or else somebody watching is going to lose my mind. They're going to scroll immediately down to the comment section and goes, I stopped watching when you put Delny in your sideboard. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep it up here just, just for you. All right. Um, because, well, I mean, what can we do again with this? Our small creatures are unblockable. No, it can't be blocked by bigger things. It's good if you have combat tricks, I guess. And then good with ETB trigger effects. Griff not Tracker, I'm not the biggest fan of. I will say this, not going to lie. I kind of wish I had the mutation now. I kind of wish I had the mutation now. So we still don't have that many enchantments here for the case file auditor. So I'm not going to take that. I think I'm going to take Trampled Garden. I think the Trampled Garden has some chance to make it into our deck. It's actually funny enough, it's good with case file auditor. But because we have so few ways to actually pump our creatures or, inter or you know, make our creatures beefy in some way, I think the case of the Trampled Garden could... Um, have some usefulness here. Here, I mean, I have double Nervous Gardener. I don't know that I need number three, honestly. I have Escape Tunnel and two Nervous Gardeners already, and I don't have anything worth fixing just yet. And like I said before, one of the weaknesses of my deck is just the lack of interaction. So I'm going to take Hard-Hitting Question here, uh, noting that I do like Nervous Gardener. Sanguine Savior, I normally don't like, but I might consider it because I do have Sumala Sentry. And then um, there's also a Dog Walker, of course, out of this pack. But let's go ahead and take Hard Hitting Question here as one of our first removal spells. And that's a hide in plain sight. I mean, we did identify that green was open, and now we are getting super rewarded with a second pick hide in plain sight. There's also a Yaris here that I would have considered splashing if hide in plain sight was not in this pack. But this is the best green rare in the set. We are slamming it. Really great with this uh, Sumala Sentry as well. Ooh, that's, that's a spicy 4-drop. That is a spicy 4-drop. All right, here we go. I think this is the blue splash that we need. We already have a hedge maze. We have double Nervous Gardener and an escape tunnel. So that with one island, we have five blue sources for just an incredible flying creature. So I'm going to take that over the Vengeful Creeper here. Like I said, white wasn't super open. And honestly, white wasn't that open in pack two either. Our seat was probably blue-green, all things considered. But... We got a couple of 10th District Heroes. We can't be too upset. And we're still taking the blue card here. In the Oh my gosh. <laughs> double the Kellen, double the fun. There's also a lot. This pack was just insane. Second Kellen, Lost in the Maze, Nervous Gardener. I mean, Satchel. This pack is loaded. We're going to take another Kellen here and be very, very happy about this. Wow, what, what are all these gold rares doing? It's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Yeah. Not seeing any white cards, but it's okay. We have... The thing with white is it gives you all the two drops that you most decks, most decks typically need, but we already have eight twos, so we're good there. I'm just going to take Culvert Ambusher. Having another face down creature is not bad with the Sumala Sentry. Like, you, like I said, I dislike Public Thoroughfare, so happy enough not playing that in my deck. And let's go ahead and take Culvert. And that's a Buried in the Garden! Oh my gosh! Okay, this... I said I haven't been doing well with these green mid, -range, uh, green mid range decks, but I mean, getting a Buried in the Garden this late, this pack was insane, by the way. We got Hide in Plain Sight, Double Kellen, and a Buried in the Garden. That's like better than our entire deck, right? There's a Nervous Garden. I mean, I've never seen this many Nervous Gardeners. I haven't seen this many Nervous Gardeners in so long. This is wild to me. I'm going to take another Fanatical Strength. I think I could use another combat trick here. So happy enough having the second one. And we are like a couple of playable short just because I don't necessarily want to play the cards in my sideboard. Shadowy Backstreet is okay, but we already have two tap lands and we're not splashing black. And V2 got... Ooh, this one's interesting. Do I take V2 Gazi Inspector number three or Evidence Examiner? I don't think I'm going to play the third one, to be honest. I just don't collect evidence that well. So I'll take the, uh, I'll take the uh, Evidence Examiner here um, in case... In case there's a world where I feel like my blues fixing is good enough where I can play it. Here I'll take uh, Sanguine Savior, I guess. 
as a potential face down card. Yeah, I mean, blue-green was definitely the colors we needed to be, but... It's... Come on. It's, it, you have to admit, right? You have to admit that it's really hard to get off of white after first picking 10th District Hero into second pick Unyielding Gatekeeper. I feel like maybe had I taken the Repulsive Mutation over the Crowd Control Warden, there's a world where we could have ended up in blue, but that is not the world that we're in right now. And this is our deck. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm liking kind of this setup so far. The only thing is whether or not I want maybe this V2 Gazi Inspector or how many. You know, if I trade some of these face down cards, it can still be a decent play in the late game. Let's take a look at our current deck to see if there's something that we're absolutely missing here. Um, I do want to take a look at my spells, my actual spells, and see if there's something here that I definitely don't want to play. But I... This this all looks okay to me. Like I said, light on white light, removal, so I'm playing this light on, uh, not on my watch. Don't need more creatures, so don't really care about these. Um, would would rather avoid playing the blue cards. So it really comes down to whether or not I want to play any of these cards. Certainly not they went this way. So it's, do I want to splash Evidence Examiner? Or do I want to play another Airtight Alibi or a Case of the Trampled Garden? Um, I think Sanguine Savior is probably one of the weaker cards here. And I think I can probably shave one V2 Gazi Inspector. Like I said, collecting evidence is kind of difficult. And this deck kind of wants to attack. So a two mana one three isn't that desirable. So I think we can maybe shave one just because we have so many twos. And then maybe actually go up to seven. So this gives us one more green source, but we have a lot of twos that we want to play as well. Maybe cut the Sanguine Savior. And I think Case of the Trample Garden might be better than um, Airtight Alibi. Two, three, four, five, six. And then I really want to play this Evidence Examiner. I just, I'm a sucker for this card. Also, you don't want too many Collect Evidence cards with the 10th District Hero, but Evidence Examiner is fine because it's, it still works with the Collect Evidence cards. Actually, no, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the Evidence Examiner and the Sanguine Savior. And uh, let's give this a go. I mean, this still gives us nine green sources. And I really want to play my uh, white two drops on turn two. And nine with the escape tunnel, nine green still seems fine. All right, let's give this a shot. I think our mana is pretty good. I mean, we have a dual and an escape tunnel on top of that. So I don't think it's going to be a big problem either way. But like I said, I just want to maximize on the chance of being able to curve out well. And the lack of the white might hurt me there. Um, it's a little heavy on lands, but it is... Uh, if I can string together a couple spells, I mean, this hand hits really hard. Now, if they have a shock, it all kind of throws everything apart. And let's hope they don't have it. It's kind of a disaster if they have a shock. Of course, they have a shock. We did draw the Fanatical Strength. All right, now they might have a Galvanize. We'll see. Really would love a creature here. Any creature or case of the trampled garden. Buried in the garden. Um, let's attack. And we got a pass here. Nothing for us. Unfortunate. I mean, we did draw a couple of spells, so we can't be too sad. And we can still bury it in the garden here if we want. Interesting. Uh, I guess I attack. I mean, I have nothing else to do. I'm just going to flip this up and hit them for four. It's very sad, but it, it's my only play, right? It's just like get in for two extra points of damage. This is probably a dog walker. Sure. That's okay. Sh okay, sure. It almost feels like they have another one, right? When they do something like that. I don't know. I just don't have a choice here. I just got to try to try to be somewhat aggressive. That's a turn where I really really needed a creature that would have just completely changed my 
potential at being able to win this game. We kept the five lander and we drew three lands and two spells. Just just needed like just needed three spells and two lands, maybe. And even that could have potentially been good enough. Do we have another combat trick here? I don't know that we have enough to, to finish the game off here. I don't think so. All right, so that's a nervous gardener. Um, let's play it face down and we will pass. I mean, we lose to a lot here. We lose to a lot of different things, but I just want to put myself in a position where I can potentially win, so. All right, we can save our creature with fanatical strength. Interesting, I had a lot of mana too. Okay. The dog still attacks because they want to flip the case. Okay. Oh, they could have felonious rage, I guess. Nope. If we draw a removal spell, do we win here? I mean, it depends on what their last card is, I guess. And now my question is, do I thin out my deck? I think I do. And do we get the island or the hedge maze? I guess the hedge maze doesn't matter because this game is going to end soon. So I'd rather get the island so that if I draw the Kellen, I can play it. Oh, no, no, no. I had the um, Bear to the Garden. No, but this is still better because if, if I do draw the Kellen, I can explore, crack, crack the clue, and still play it. Oh, my gosh. That was a legendary draw. Absolutely legendary draw. Holy cow. Glint Weaver off the top? Are you kidding me? Okay. Um, if they had a shock, I think they would have killed my face down creature. So I'm not too concerned about that. So maybe it's just uh, two across. Maybe I just make all four fours. All right, they're at two. Gadget Technician, Glint Weaver is an available blocker. Making the Glint Weaver at least a 4-4 is big to play around Galvanize. If I made a 5-5, five five, I could have gained one more life, so that's something to consider. All right, here we go. Case of the Gateway Express and Haas the Vigilant NT. So Case is very good. Depending on... I, it depends on what... Oh, no. So that means they can play two creatures this turn and slam the case, which is bad for us. That is very bad for us. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So what is it? Like Dog Walker plus Case kill this, attack me? Well, they can't flip this, I guess. Maybe they just don't have two creatures. Ooh, Glint Weaver, what a draw. Okay, so they're going to deal four, three damage to the Glint Weaver and then use the case to finish it off. Well, I'm glad I made a bunch of 4-4s. Four, now, are they going to attack me? No, because that puts them dead on board. All right, well, I'm glad we made a bunch of 4-4s. Four, we have a, they have two cards in hand. They're at two. And uh, we have a lethal attacker. 
But they have all action, I'm pretty sure. We'll see. Face down card. I, I think I'm going to attack into this. Reckless detective, okay. That's also good. That means it's unlikely that this thing can um, kill my crowd control warden. Oh, what a draw. Killer among us. Okay. Our deck coming up big here. Our deck coming up big here. The Granite Witness would have been very bad. Oh, is this a dog walker maybe? Yep. Their deck is excellent. All right. Human? I'm feeling human. Okay. Close game, a lot of back and forth. They got Dog Walker on. Yeah, they, they, they have a very solid red white deck. Lamplight Phoenix. And they have more than enough to collect evidence here. I don't think they can attack me. Oh! Hard hitting question off the top. Is that lethal? Let's see. I'm at seven. I feel like they just kind of have to block all my tokens, right? Or they die. Oh, you know what this is? This is really funny. They have a one in three shot of dying, right? Because they can only block three of my things. So if they don't block my human, oh man. They have a one in three shot of dying. All right, well, let's kill Reckless Detective. They have to block Crowd Control Warden and two of my other things. Which are they going to block? Human? Merfolk? Ah, oh, they got it right! Should have chosen Merfolk. Oh, man. Okay, they're at one. They're at one. We have three attackers. I'm at seven. So it's really hard for the Lamplight Phoenix to kill me. You know, I'm thinking about pump spells here, and a lot of them help me deal, help them deal three more damage. Okay. I feel like I'm a pretty big favorite from this spot. Wow. Okay. Our deck coming up big. Glint Weaver. Glint Weaver and also hard hitting question there. That was really, really big. Okay. That was that was nice. That was nice. That was clutch. Some clutch, clutch top decks. Still ring four. Come on, we gotta get back to the podium. Okay. Ooh, all of our colors I will keep. 10th District Hero turn two into any number of cards. Actually, I wonder if I should play the V2 Gazi Inspector here just to have it soak up a combat trick because I'm going to block the red herring. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. It also will give us a two drop in the graveyard to collect evidence off the 10th district hero. But just, I feel like early in the game, the Boros deck will just have a lot of ways to kind of clear the path. Uh, don't want to play Case of the Trampled Garden just yet. Seems a little too all in. Um, guess I can play Sanguine Savior here. We can pass. Concealed weapon, interesting, okay. That's a five two, oh my gosh, what a top deck. Hide in plain sight, are you kidding me? <laughs> Okay. Okay. I will allow it. Uh Wow. That's incredible. Oh my gosh, I just realized something. I just realized something. One of those cards is a Kellen. I can flip it over next turn. I'm not I just don't I just take this, right? I can get some life back later. Oh my, that's, that's unreal. That is unreal. 
I don't know if this is greedy or not. Maybe it is. I mean, I, I get to eat something here. This is ridiculous. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Wow. Okay. And then we can kill the concealed weapon. So if they want to take a turn off to equip their creature with concealed weapon, that's fine. I mean, I'm happy trading one of these cards. If they equip and then play a creature, I'll take five. You know what I mean? What an insane series of draws. Okay, so this feels like on the job. <sighs> Do I care about my life total or would I rather have a 6-7? I think I'd rather just have a 6-7 to be honest. Oh, man. <laughs> they had to play no witnesses. That's ridiculous. All right. No messing around. I don't think I need to get value here because I want to I just have this in play. So I'm going to play this, another one. They're going to just be like, oh, my God. Look at all these rares. Look at all these rares. <laughs> oh. What is one to do? What is one to do with this kind of draw? Hide in plain sight, both my Kellens, 10th district hero. This is absurd. Completely absurd. All right, so if I draw a land, no, that doesn't work. This is, this is so insane. All right, um, I'm at 11. I can try to flip Case of the Trampled Garden, which seems pretty good, and then maybe flip down the Crowd Control Warden. And I'm going to kill this artifact, so it's going to be a 3-2. So let's make this at least a 3-4. Sure. Let's attack. Kill this artifact. They can block. They can not block. I don't really care. All right. They have one card, and yeah, this is just, I mean, unless they have like another no witnesses or something. All right, I'll, I take it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was just one of just the most blessed, ridiculous draws I've ever had. I mean, they had a nice aggressive start, nice good fair borrow start, and I just went turn four, hide in plain sight, flip over Kellen, kill your red herring. Unreal. Unreal. All right. On the play. Ooh, this hand is awesome. Look at this hand. Just look at it. Turn two, 10th district hero. Turn three, face down, nervous gardener. I have a knot on my watch. And then a killer among us at the top of our curve with all three colors of our mana. Cannot complain about that. I will fetch the island here with the escape tunnel. I know I can get one off the nervous gardener, but one, the nervous gardener could die. And two, if I draw Kellen off the top, I might be interested in um, putting a land into play here. Although I'm probably just playing 10th District Hero. Now, what's the second color of mana I get? Or rather, because I have Island Plains Forest, I'm just wondering what I get with the Nervous Gardener. Is it Plains or Forest? I mean, Rift First Helling is double green to flip over. But 10th District Hero requires white at some point. Ooh, they're... they're they're getting aggro. Turn two, Nervous Gardener. That's okay. We were on the play, though, so that's a good thing. And we also have a killer among us, and we have not on my watch. So I think we'll be okay here if that's what our opponent's trying to do. 
Also curious, what uh, should I should I in this instance should I be um playing the Rift Burst Hellion face down and play the Nervous Gardener um face down turn four, or do you run out the Nervous Gardener turn three? In my experience, all my opponents have played out Nervous Gardener in turn three. Because this also means that if we <laughs> if we trade, it's fine. Because I can just get a land here. I'll go get a... Oh, that this is actually a good question too. You know what? I can... Hmm, do I get a Plains? Or do I get Hedge Maze? No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to get a Plains. I don't need the survey. I'd rather have two white, two green. I have my blue. And then I can probably wait on this... Um, Rift. I can probably wait on this 10th District Hero and just maybe go with the Rift Burst Hellion. I don't know. I just feel like just, you know, trying to use your mana every turn is pretty good. Yeah, I, li I love getting the second white here. 10th District Hero requires a lot of white mana. There might be some trading shenanigans at some point. We're going to have Killer Among Us go into the graveyard as well. One thing I have to be mindful of is I cannot make two copies of 5-5 five, five, 10th District Heroes because uh, they they become legendary. Oh, this gets Vigilance too? Man. Card is, card is beastly. All right. It looks like a Galvanize. They're looking at my 10th District Hero. No, no, no. Torch the Witness? Yeah, Torch the Witness. If it was Bite Down on Crime, they would have done it at, with the attack. Let's play Killer Among Us. Okay, last... Uh, we're going with Merfolk this time. We're going with Merfolk. Nobody expects the Merfolk. Okay, so this looks like a Dog Walker or a Gadget Technician. Oh, that's really good. I'm going to just attack with my two ginormous creatures. So I guess they know which one it is. <laughs> because I can't play this and activate it twice. Ideally, they don't block my face down card. I don't really want to... I mean, flipping. Look, to be fair, flipping it up is completely fine. Because then I have a 6-7 in play that I can fanatical strength. But I kind of want to just leave up the 10th District Hero. But we'll see what they do. No blocks. All right. Let's go ahead and try to pump this. They could have a burn spell, I guess. Nope. Not going to flip this up. Deal six. And 10th District Hero, your turn. And I think in response to them making two one ones. Or a 1-1. One, one. I'm going to go ahead and just make this into a 4-4. Four, four, um, just so that, you know, a case of the burning masks or something doesn't get me. I still have a fanatical strength or not on my watch. I don't know that I'm going to need both. We're the one on the offensive. They're the ones that's going to try to find a way to get my creatures off the battlefield here. And if they have Galvanize, I do have the Fanatical Strength to save my 10th District Hero, and I would love for them to spend their entire turn to crack their clue and then cast Galvanize. That would be very good. Offender at large, I am not concerned about. They're going to probably target their Thopter and then just keep everything back. So I can turn this into an 8-8. Eight eight. Okay. And I, I guess I could have used not on my watch there. I mean, Buried in the Garden just has to end this here, right? With the Fanatical Strength. Yeah. 
We are getting some incredible draws here. I mean, our deck is pretty great, right? We have just a bunch of rares. <laughs> Double 10th District Hero, Loxodon. Uh, Loxodon's not like a bomb on the level of the other cards, but then Hide in Plain Sight, Double Kellen, Good Mana, uh, what, Triple Nervous Gardener. Yeah, I'm liking this deck. All right, perfect mana again. We have a Glintweaver, which we can't cast, but we have Escape Tunnel, Plains Forest, double 10th District Hero, Nervous Gardener, and Glintweaver. So this hand, also great. And this could be a hand where we go ahead and fetch the, um, the Hedge Maze, just because might need to smooth out our draws to get the Glintweaver, but we'll see. Okay, run out the Escape Tunnel. I mean, this is almost the exact same hand except we have a Glint Weaver over uh, Killer Among Us. Let's go ahead and fetch our island here. Oh. I mean, we talked about this before. I think it's probably still correct to just play out a 2-3. If I had land number 4 guaranteed in my hand, I might go turn 2 Kellen. But given that I don't, I want to do it this way. All right, now we can do this, which is amazing. <laughs> we literally played three rares in our first three turns. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, our opponent hit us with the knife. I mean, we I gotta give I gotta I gotta I gotta say thanks. They said nice. They're being polite. Private eye. Oh, that's actually quite good. And we just drew the perfect card. Wow. Okay, hold on. I mean, I do want to kill this private eye. I don't. Maybe they just don't block. They're just like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Let's play Kellen. Look at our board. It's like a block constructed board. Granted. Turn three, Private Eye is very good. And if they go makeshift binding, yeah, on the Kellen, I mean, this is still a game they can very much win. Absolutely. But not to take away from our incredible start. Holy cow. We just found Buried in the Garden. Let's get that makeshift binding off the battlefield. <laughs> I'll be taking that back. Thank you very much. I think getting Kellen in play is probably going to be a little bit better than removing the private eye. It might be close. It might be close, to be honest. Private eye is super good and I don't have that much removal. But I just want to have more creatures in play with this fanatical strength and um, 10th District Hero stuff happening. Oh, I guess it didn't matter. I guess we should have gotten the Private Eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, their deck's awesome. Their deck's awesome. Not much more I can say beyond that. Okay, so now they are representing a removal spell. So I have to be careful. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to just... Oh, I messed that up. Oh, I messed that up. I messed that up. Oh, well. I should have gotten the uh, hedge maze and played it for the turn. Oh, no, no, I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't do that and, like, crack my clue. Never mind. They're sneaky, though. They're keeping up the two mana. That's like Galvanize or Lightning Helix mana. And they're certainly representing it here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, Forensic Researcher. I don't know if I'm supposed to crack this clue. I don't know. We'll see. Do I want forest or plains? Let's 
Let's go forest. Honestly, if they have a removal spell, it's not that bad. I kind of just want them to use it. Here, here you go. Windows open. Would you like to kill? No? All right. Hmm. Lot of amazing options here. I can hide in plain sight or play the glint weaver here. Um, hide in plain sight allows me to turn these into four fours, but th that's not great at attacking. But it just puts like, this puts a lot of power and toughness on the battlefield. So let's just go ahead and do that then. Uh, let's cloak this and this. And then let's play this face down. I'm just not going to attack into this two open mana. They could have not on my watch. They could have all kinds of things. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a burn spell though. I think it's not on my watch or a pump spell. I just. I just feel like if they had a helix or a galvanize, they would have used it. So I just want to keep adding to the board here. And I think next turn might be a pretty good opportunity to attack. I can flip up the Culvert Ambusher. Uh, they don't have anything in the yard here, so the Forensic Researcher doesn't really tap anything down. And now we have the option already to pump up our 10th District Hero. I feel like it's almost 100% not on my watch, by the way. And if that's the case, what do I do, right? If that is the case, what do I do? Um, I can just attack with uh, all my face down cards and just see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just feel like playing the Glint Weaver and being tapped out against potentially not on my watch isn't ideal. I mean, I can, well, actually, you know what? Forget it. Let's just, all right, let's just. I know, I know what I'm going to do now. Those are the expendable creatures. And... We know about the not on my watch, but this also puts things into our graveyard where with the 10th district hero, it's going to be really tough for them to pull off anything on the following turn. And I've used up all my mana and next turn I have access to eight mana, which allows me to activate 10th district hero twice, potentially with the fanatical strength. Oh, no, something's going to die here. Activate fanatical strength and then... Um... Yeah. Now there's plenty of food here. They did not use not on my watch still, notably. The thing is, if one of these dies, it's not too bad, right? I don't even, do I even care? Well, I mean, that is quite good, actually. Okay, so they don't have not on my watch available now. Okay, so I can kill the private eye, which, I mean, they're at 11. It's like, how bad can this be for us, given that we can turn this into a 5-5 five five and make everything indestructible? Yeah we, yeah, we just attack with everything. I'm overthinking this. Yeah, especially if they don't have a land drop this turn. 
two, three, four, five with fanatical strength. Okay, yeah. Good luck. That is all I'm gonna say. They just, I, there's just no ch no shot that they can beat a combat trick here. So, B because they tapped out. War leader's call, yeah. Double makeshift binding, good stuff. Kind of wish I killed the private eye. Okay. So we can deal five. How much mana do we have? This costs five mana, six, seven. Do I have nine? Three, four, five, six. I have eight. So I don't have mana to activate this twice and activate this once in fanatical strength. Um, collect evidence two. Four, eight. Oh, oh, that's what I can do. I can go four... And then I can collect evidence here as well. And then fanatical strength. Well, I guess I can just do this instead. Uh, and then five, six, seven. Oh, no, I needed to do it the other way to do exactly lethal. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, Paul. I'm just overthinking it just because my board is so good. That, ugh, I don't know. Okay, anyways, let's, um, let's kill Private Eye, I guess. Had I made both my 10th District heroes 4-4s? Four Had I made them both 4-4s? Four and then Fanatical Strength, it was lethal. I don't know if they can do something for one mana. But this leaves us vulnerable to a Sweeper. So, we'll see. I mean, there are two here. This, this is probably good enough, but... Still, still got to be hard on myself. We're going for rank one here. It's a dog walker, okay. And yeah, they're going to die. Woo! It's a good battle. Considering how good our hand was, that was quite the battle. You know what I mean? Is this a lightning helix? It sure is. Yeah, great splash. A lot of power, private eye. I think that my opponent's deck with that draw would have beaten most decks for sure. We just, even if we didn't play super optimally, we were still able to get there. Okay. Uh, yep. Got all of our colors again. Let's go ahead and just go fetch our forest. We have turn to Somala Sentry into face down card. Always great. Nervous Gardener would be super nice, just because I can flip this up sooner. That's also a very good draw. Killer Among Us gives us something to do at the top end of the curve. So now we have a turn three play. And then we have the Killer Among Us for the top end of the curve. That's a Hedge Maze. I, hope this, I really hope this doesn't get countered. That's a face down card from them. All right, let's go ahead and kill this face down card. 
because we all know it's a nervous gardener. No, it's a cock crocodile. All right, let's play the hedge maze. No, no more lands. We don't need any more lands. Let's get that one out of there. Oh man, crowd control uh, warden with killer among us. Whew. Crime stopper sprite. Oh, and they can tap this down, sure. But they're not going to block our face down card with all the mana that we have. Ooh, culvert ambusher also great. So let's attack. And then we just slam killer among us, and this thing's going to be gigantic. All right, well, we didn't do goblin yet. So, I guess we do Goblin. Furtive Courier, okay. We have a Goblin there. Um, will they like double block the Sentry? I guess I don't really care trading that for one creature. All right, so let's kill the Furtive Courier. Sure. They are at one life. With four creatures in play, one of them, which one of which is a nine nine. Topiary Pant. Did they play a land this turn? I, I hope they don't have like out cold or something. Maybe this is a V2 Gazi Inspector. Crime Stopper Sprite. Okay, so they're gonna freeze that. Okay. Um. I guess I'm just trading the Goblin for two things. But let's just force that to happen. I guess just in case. Let's kill this Furtive Courier. Okay. Uh, they can't doppelgang for two. I'm always scared of doppelgang, but they're at one and we have four lethal attackers, so I can't imagine they can win here. Yeah, I, that was just another perfect, perfectly smooth draw, right? We just had a good play every turn of the game. Every turn of the game. So we have, I'm not going to lie, this is just a combination so far where not only do we have a really good deck, we're also drawing really well. And I will fully admit to that, right? We've had plenty of runs in the past where every opening hand is just like, you question everything. You're like, am I playing enough lands? Like every hand is like two planes and all green cards or two forests and all white cards. You're like, what's going on? Okay, um, this hand is interesting. We have double Kellen and we don't have any way to play it. We have a good number of blue sources. We do have a two and a three. So it's just like, is this better than going to six? Because I still have forest and planes and a two drop and a three. I'm going to keep this on the draw. We have a lot of looks at just additional lands and spells. And because I just have a really good... The, the question is, when you have a six, like how much better can the six be? Where with this hand, like I have a good two and a three with three lands. Like, that's just a call. <laughs> or, or, or we just naturally draw the island. Or we just naturally... Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I mean, we're on the draw, though, so maybe maybe we get run over. I, 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 I cannot believe that that happened. Oh my gosh. That's ridiculous. Come on. Even I believe that's ridiculous. Okay, well, you know what? We're still going to lose. That's crazy. Look, look at their hand, right? Turn two, Reckless Detective. Turn three, Krenko. Could very easily lose this game. On the draw. That What a start. Goodness gracious. Oh my gosh. But that's a hide in plain sight. Is that better or worse than Kellen?
Is that better or like having two two twos? Is that better or worse than Kellen? I'm gonna play Kellen. I want to force the combat trick if they have it, and then I have unyielding gatekeeper. Actually, if they attack me, if they have the bravado to attack me, then maybe then I don't block right because I had this three four in play. Because next turn I have the ability to play unyielding gatekeeper. And then save my Kellen or exile their creature if they have a combat trick. No, this is this is this is excellent for us. This is excellent for us. And now they also don't have the red mana here to make a creature, so we can crack our clue here and attack for three. Um Although now it just feels like a good opportunity to just cast Hide in Plain Sight, just put a bunch of power on the battlefield. Let's do that. Play Hedge Maze. And I think that's actually going to be useful. Sanguine Savior is also going to be pretty nice, just to help with kind of race situations. The creature, the cards that we hit off the Hide in Plain Sight were. Less than ideal. Oh, it looks like a bite down on crime here. On Kellen. Okay. So this is interesting. I can kill Krenko, but I would lose two of my creatures. Or I can, like... Double block a Reckless Detective and get that off the battlefield. And not two for one myself. Yeah, let's just kill that. I'm not too concerned about this Krenko because I have this un Unyielding Gatekeeper. And I don't like the fact that they're rummaging every turn with a Detective. Wow, why is it trying to do that? Uh, all right, I'm just going to pass here. I think this is just going to... I'm going to call this my stabilization turn. And I'm going to pass. Uh, I think it's really hard to get blown out here. Oh, especially with this is just Nervous Gardener. It's really hard to get blown out here with this Unyielding Gatekeeper. If they attack with Krenko, I can double block and then see what they do. And I have mana up. Exile another. Okay, so it doesn't target itself. Okay, so that's... Escape Tunnel is scary. I am at 8, so I just need to be mindful. Oh my gosh. Okay. What is happening? What does it say? Can't be blocked, right? Okay. What what is happening? Oh, okay. They they, they just got in for one. All right. Do I want a two two or a one three reach creature? Hmm. No, you know what I want? I just want this Krenko off the battlefield at this point. All right. Um, lots of options here. I think I'm just going to go with Kellen. And then we'll just keep our creatures back. They have Island in hand. We're at six. Everything's looking pretty good here. We just have no shortage of things to do with our mana. Rift Burst Hellion, Sanguine Savior, Nervous Gardener. I just, I'm trying to think like how I can, oh, is it Bite Down on Crime off the top? It sure is. Okay. I mean, we, like I said, we still have plenty of things here. Yep, trade everything. Play your land, sure. 
And let's go ahead and play a land. And I don't, well, I guess I can play Nervous Gardener. Well, I want Rift Burst Hellion for sure. And then let's play Nervous Gardener, sure. Then we'll use this to get, I don't know, I, uh, I guess a forest. All right, Sanitation Automaton, that's fine. I think we're just going to win with this Rift Burst Hellion most likely. Three, four, five, six. Let's go ahead and get the forest. Because that gives us Rift Burst Hellion Flip plus... Um, Rift Burst Hellion Flip plus Fanatical Strength if we need. Let's attack. Then we'll play Killer Among Us and Face Down card. This time we'll choose Human. Because why not? And yep, this is going to be pretty hard to fight through. Pretty hard to fight through. Fanatical Strength, Hustle Bustle, I guess. That gives them 7 power of Trample, but we can still block 2 things and attack them for the, for the win. Uh, we have access to flipping up the Rift Burst Hellion plus flipping up Sanguine Savior next turn to gain 8 life, which makes racing basically impossible from that point on. Okay, never mind. They galvanized my face down card. But they don't have any attacks. What did they what are they doing? Uh it's okay, so if they do that. Let's cut how much power do we have total here? We have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen power. Plus this, that's 17 power. So if they attack me with the tipster, I can also just take it and just kill them. Or I can block it and kill them. All right, I have lots of options. Yeah, okay, so let's target the human. Let's flip this up. 6, 10, 11, 12, and let's save our Nervous Gardener too. Why not? This is a smooth, smooth run so far. Smooth run so far. 6 and 0, oh, still rank 3. All right. Or maybe we're 5 and 0? Oh? I'm not sure. No, we're 6 and 0. Oh. We are crushing it here. Smooth sailing, excellent draws. This deck just has so much power. Anybody can pilot this deck, to be honest. Okay, we are on the play. I'm going to keep this, but it's definitely not... This is definitely a more reasonable hand than ones we've had in the past. We have a two-drop, we have a Buried in the Garden and a Killer Among Us, but none of our rares. And... Uh, but we have time to draw them, of course, right? But no three-drop here either. But I don't think you can mulligan this. But our opponent is playing Boros with Novice Inspector, so there you go. Free attack for them. Hey, the turn two Inspector is... Okay, and we drew a face down card. And the nice thing here is that because we have the Buried in the Garden here, it helps ramp us into being able to flip the Rift Burst Hellion ASAP. What is this attack? So that's... That's telling me they have felonious rage, right? Like this, otherwise this attack doesn't make sense. Do I force the felonious rage? Or can I can I deal with it? The, uh, the thing is, I'm like never blocking otherwise. Well, see, let's see. I take three here. I can use Buried in the Garden on the Market Watch Phantom, and then play a Killer Among Us, and then flip this over. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, the nice thing here is that it's less likely that they're going to have a felonious rage. <laughs> uh. Now I'm wondering if I want to bury it in the garden just to slow things down. 
Or do I play something like in the Unyielding Gatekeeper? I'm just going to slow things down. Boros has a ton of tricks, and we're one man away from flipping this up, so I'm just going to pass. Holy cow, okay. Pedal to our opponent is playing pedal to the metal. Pedal to the metal. How do we want to respond to that? Killer Among Us, when we're on the back foot, is not as good. They have two cards in hand. I'm just gonna pass. They can't really kill this face down card unless they have they go land makeshift binding. Red herring has to attack. Uh and I'm gonna I'm just gonna eat the novice inspector. Yeah, I like this. They can't even kill this with Galvanized. And now this can block the Thopter. Fanatical Strength is very nice. They might crack this end of turn. But now we can just go Killer Among Us and keep up Fanatical Strength. Yeah, Fanatical Strength was a really good draw. I got to choose something different every turn, uh, uh, every game, even though if my opponents don't see it in my mind, psychologically, I'm mixing it up. Right. I, because also Eakin could be watching these videos. Right. And if he can just like, Oh, Paul always chooses goblin, then I'm in trouble. You know what I mean? If we ever play. So. Ooh. Okay, let's see if you have another one. Do you have another one? Why did they crack the red herring? Don't they want to... Oh, they want to... Wait, why didn't they draw a card here? Do they have another two-mana card? Two-mana play? No? Interesting. Okay. All right, now I think we can uh, turn things around pretty safely here. Let's attack. This is for billions. I should have played the Unyielding Gatekeeper face down first, though. I don't know what I was thinking. Then Unyielding Gatekeeper face down. Let's uh, manually tap here. And what does it do? Exile target non-land permanent. And non-land permanent, so anything. So I can target... Um, if they try to kill my Rift Burst Hellion, I can save it. That's kind of what I was trying to go for here. We can take the one here. Don't care that much. Because we have Fanatical Strength available here. Ooh, not on my watch is not bad. I'm just going to attack with the two obvious ones. They have four mana up with two cards in hand. So I still just want to... I don't want to throw this away necessarily. Okay. What you got? They're at four life. We have fanatical strength. Next turn, I think it's pretty safe to attack with everything. Do need to be mindful of like a lightning helix, right? Lightning helix is kind of can be scary. Hmm.
I mean, I'm just going to kill the drone smith. What do you have? Nothing! And we are victorious! What a smooth run. What a smooth run and what an excellent deck. I mean, this might have been the best Selesnya base deck that I've had. I mean, this was incredible. This was definitely where just like the arena program was like, hey, you know what, Paul? We're going to hook you up this time. Don't, don't, even, don't even worry about signals, man. Just don't even worry about signals. We're just going to gift you two 10th district heroes to start. And then why don't you just figure out the rest? And that's kind of what happened. It's kind of what happened. I mean, look, uh, this deck just overperformed. Um, actually, I don't even know if it overperformed. It was just a great deck. It was just a green-white deck with a phenomenal curve. We had, I'm not counting the Evidence Examiner. I'll put that here. But it, it was a deck with seven two-drops, a um, couple of nice combat tricks, and then we just had bombs. D d double 10th District Hero, uh, Unyielding Gatekeeper, Double Kellen, uh, Buried in the Garden, Premium Uncommon, Hide in Plain Sight, Green's Best Rare, Killer Among Us. I mean, this deck just not only was it great, but like I said before, we had good mana and we also drew really, really well to get the 7-0. To get the 7-0. And where does that put us? Still ranked number three. I went 7-0 and I'm still ranked number three. Okay, we have still a very, very long climb ahead of us, but I am still very happy about this. I am back. I was kind of off to the side, and I'm now back on that podium. Bronze medal right here on my chest. Hopefully we can upgrade it to silver, maybe go for the gold. We'll see, but 7-0 can't complain about this run. The perfect, perfect run with our awesome Selesnya Splash Kellen Dot deck. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you wanted to support this channel in other ways, I did launch my Patreon. And uh, shout out to all the current patrons. Really do appreciate your support. Really love all the activity in the Discord. And uh, you know, every day I wake up and I try my best to stay as engaged as possible because all of you are very, very awesome. But you know who else is awesome? You. For following me on this draft and uh, kind of giving me the good vibes so that I could draw perfectly to get this 7-0. to Rank 2 tomorrow? We'll see.